Hi everyone, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be focusing on the accessory structures of the skin with a major focus on the hair. The accessory structures of the skin, which includes the hair, nails, and various types of glands, are all produced from the epidermis during embryonic development. The hairs, or pili, are found all over the surface of the skin, except for the palms, soles, and palmar and plantar surfaces of the fingers and toes. Hair distribution is determined in part by genetics and hormones, but is most concentrated on the scalp, eyebrows, armpits, and around the genitals. Hair provides many important functions, including protecting the scalp from physical injury and sunburn, and insulation that minimizes heat loss from the top of the head. The eyes are protected from debris through the eyelashes and eyebrows, and the hairs are associated with sensory receptors called hair root plexuses that can detect light touch. Hair is made up of concentrations of dead, keratinized epidermal cells cemented together with proteins. The superficial part of the hair projecting above the skin is called the shaft. The deep part of the hair that is embedded within the dermis is the root. Both the shaft and the root are composed of three concentric layers of cells, the medulla, cortex, and cuticle. As we can see in this illustration of the hair, the medulla is the innermost layer that is made of several rows of cells with different amounts of pigments, more in dark hair, less in gray hair, and none in white hair. The cortex is the middle layer forming most of the shafts. The cuticle of the hair is the outermost layer made of one flat layer of keratinized cells that overlap each other like shingles on a roof. The hair follicle surrounds the root and consists of an external and internal root sheath, which collectively is called the epithelial root sheath. The external root sheath is the lower extension of the epidermis. The internal root sheath is made by the hair matrix, which is a layer of dividing cells that originates from the stratum basale and forms a tube of epithelial cells between the hair and external root sheath. Surrounding the hair follicle is a dense region of dermis called the dermal root sheath. The bulb is an onion-shaped structure at the base of each follicle. It contains the papilla of the hair, which is a nipple-shaped structure consisting of areolar connective tissue and blood vessels that contribute nutrients and oxygen to the growing hair follicle and cells of the matrix, which is also located here in the bulb. The hair matrix originates from the stratum basale of the epidermis and grows existing hairs as well as generating new hairs to replace the old ones that are shed. Also associated with the hair follicle are sebaceous or oil glands and smooth muscle bundles called erector pili. The erector pili muscles contract under physiological or emotional stress, which pulls the hair shafts erect. This causes what we call goosebumps or goose pimples. And as we learned previously, a bundle of neurons called the hair root plexus is located at the base of the hair follicle at the bulb, making them sensitive to touch or movement. All hair follicles undergo a growth cycle, which consists of a growth stage, or growing stage, a regression stage, and a resting stage. The hair matrix cells divide by mitosis during the growth stage, and as the new cells accumulate, the cells are pushed upward, become keratinized, and die as the hair grows longer. 
This lasts for about two to six years, and approximately 85% of the hairs at any one time are in the growth stage. During the regression stage, which lasts for two to three weeks, the hair matrix cells stop dividing, the follicle atrophies or shrinks, and the hair stops growing. The follicle then enters the resting stage, lasting about three months, after which a new growth cycle begins. The old root is either pushed out or falls out as the new hair begins to grow. We usually lose about 70 to 100 scalp hairs per day, but the rate of growth and replacement varies and is influenced by age, gender, stress, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Some of these factors can also cause alopecia, which is the complete or partial lack of hair. There are different types of hairs found on the body during various stages of development. These hairs include lanugo, vellus, and terminal hair. Lanugo is woolly or downy hair, a very fine, non-pigmented hair that appears during the fifth month of fetal development and covers most of the fetus's body. Terminal hairs are the long, dark, thicker hairs that replace the lanugo of the scalp, eyebrows, and eyelashes. The vellus hairs replace the lanugo covering the remainder of the body. These short, fine, light-colored hairs are the ones we know as peach fuzz. As the child reaches puberty, androgen hormones trigger the vellus hairs at the armpits and pubic regions to become terminal hairs. In boys, the terminal hairs also replace the vellus hairs on the chest, limbs, and face, resulting in hairy chests, arms, legs, beards, and mustaches. Hair color is influenced by the type and quantity of melanin within its cells. We know that the melanocytes in the matrix secrete melanin into the cells of the hair's cortex and medulla. Dark hair contains rich concentrations of a form of melanin called eumelanin while blonde hair and red hair contain another type of melanin called pheomelanin. Hair turns gray as melanin production slows down as we age. And white hair is the result of air bubbles that build up in the shaft as melanin production stops. Skin also contains glands, which are collections of epithelial cells that function in secretion. The exocrine glands that are most associated with the skin include the sebaceous, or oil glands, the sudoriferous, or sweat glands, and the ceruminous glands. The sebaceous glands are simple, branched, acinar, or rounded glands, that are usually associated with the hair follicles. They are also found on most regions of the body except for the palms and soles. These glands secrete their products directly into the neck of the hair follicle. Sebaceous glands found elsewhere, such as the lips and genitals, secrete their product directly onto the skin surface. The main product secreted by the sebaceous glands is sebum, which is an oily mixture of triglyceride lipids, cholesterol, salts, and proteins. It covers the hair surface and helps prevent the hair from drying out and becoming brittle. It also minimizes evaporation of water from the skin surface, keeping the skin soft and moist as well as restricting the growth of certain types of bacteria. The sudoriferous, or sweat glands, are very abundant in the body, ranging in numbers from 3 to 4 million. These glands secrete sweat, also called perspiration, through pores onto the skin surface. There are two main types of sudoriferous glands, the eccrine glands, and apocrine glands. 
The Eckerin sweat glands are simple, coiled, tube-like glands that are more abundant than the apocrine glands. Remember that eccrine glands are found everywhere, especially in the palms, soles, and forehead. The portion of the eccrine gland that does the secretion is found in the deep dermis, with the excretory duct passing through the dermis and epidermis and ending as a pore on the skin surface. The eccrine glands secrete a watery sweat, about a half liter per day, consisting of water with small concentrations of sodium and chlorine ions, urea, ammonia, amino acids, and lactic acid. The eccrine sweat glands are directly involved in thermoregulation, which is the regulation of body temperature via homeostasis. They do their job through evaporation, so when sweat evaporates on the skin surface, it carries away large amounts of heat, thus cooling down the body. This process is called thermoregulatory sweating. The act of sweating also helps the body get rid of small amounts of metabolic wastes, such as urea and ammonia. The eccrine sweat glands also play a role in emotional sweating, which is when one starts to sweat in times of stress, like embarrassment, fear, or anxious situations like taking a test. We often refer to this type of sweat as cold sweats. The apocrine sweat glands are similar in structure to the eccrine glands, but have larger ducts. They are located on the skin of the armpits, groin, and the areoli of the breasts, and begin functioning with the onset of puberty. They secrete their products via exocytosis in regions of the lower dermis or subcutaneous layer with their ducts opening directly into the hair follicle. The sweat produced from the apocrine glands is more viscous and it's yellow and milky in color compared to the sweat from the eccrine glands. It does include the same materials as equine sweat, but it has more lipids and proteins. The sweat has no odor, but when it encounters bacteria on the skin surface, the bacteria impart a musky odor to the sweat, which we call body odor, or BO. They are also involved in emotional sweating and sexual excitement, but do not play a role in thermoregulation as the eccrine glands do. The ceruminous glands are modified sweat glands located in the external ear that produce a waxy secretion. They excrete their products directly on the skin surface of the ear canal or into the ducts of the sebaceous glands. Cerumen is the combined excretory product of these glands, often called earwax. As we can see here on the end of the Q-tip, it has a thicker consistency and a yellowish color. Cerumen is sticky and can trap foreign particles and other debris, like insects, from entering the ear. It also helps lubricate and waterproof the ear canal and is antimicrobial. The last of the accessory structures are the nails. Nails are condensed layers of densely packed, dead, hardened, keratinized epidermal cells that cover the dorsal surfaces of the fingers and toes. They help protect the distal end or tips of the digits. They help in touch perception and manipulation by providing support and counter pressure, as well as help us grasp and handle objects. Nails consist of a nail body or plate that is the visible portion of the nail. It contains a harder type of keratin and is similar to the stratum corneum of the epidermis, but the cells are not shed. The nail body mostly appears pink due to capillary blood in the dermis directly under the body. The free edge is the part of the nail that extends beyond the digit. It is white because there are no capillaries underneath it. The hyponychium, 
is a thick area of the stratum corneum which attaches the nail to the tip of the digit. The nail root is covered by skin and is not visible. The lunula is the thick white part of the nail's base that has a crescent moon shape. The epithelium is thick in this area which prevents the capillaries underneath from showing. The nail bed is the skin located just below the nail body. The eponychium, or cuticle, is a thin area of epidermis that sticks to the base of the nail and consists of stratum corneum. The nail matrix is the epithelium just behind the nail root, and like the hair matrix, it consists of actively dividing cells that produce new nail cells through mitosis. Nail growth averages about one millimeter per week and like hair growth is influenced by many factors including age, nutrition, general health, temperature, season, and even time of day.